Luke chapter 11. And it came to pass that as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, one of his disciples said unto him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John also taught his disciples. Well, prayer is to be taught by the leader. And he said unto them, When ye pray, say, Our Father, this would be the, the reverence, which are in heaven. Wait a minute. Our Father is the relationship we have with God. The Father is the is the revelation. The hallow is the reverencing. Be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. As in heaven, so on earth. Give us day by day our daily bread. Now, this is not a prayer repetition. This is an outline of prayer. You address your prayer to God. You reverence who God is. You realize that God wills, will be accomplished outside of our will. And we're to seek from God our food. And for the Jew in the tribulation period, that's going to have to be a strong prayer. Because they can't receive the mark. It would be an abomination to them. And forgive us our sins. There's repentance. For we also forgive everyone that is indebted to us. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Well, temptation, James says, is when we draw away from lust. This prayer that Jesus teaches disciples is a tribulation prayer. The temptation is to receive the mark so you can eat and buy and sell. Remember, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, who would have been Elias, has already shown up. And he said unto them, Which of you have a friend? And shall go into him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come unto me, and I have nothing set before him. So at midnight, the guy's sleeping, comes banging on the door, I need some bread. And he from within shall answer and say, and He doesn't even come to the door, he just yells out the house. Trouble me not. The door is now shut. My children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and get. I'm not even going to get out of bed. I'm not going to help you. I'm sleepy. That rich man. That lawyer, I mean. I'm not going to help a, a, a Samaritan. Israel's not looking out for each other. And that was the law. And, he, uh, and I say unto you, though he will not rise and give him, because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give as many as he needeth. It's not the friendship, it's the, the urgency of the need. The guy's pounding and pounding and pounding on the door. He's not going to let up till he gets something. The guy ain't going to sleep until he gets out of that bed and fulfills the need. And I say unto you, ask and it shall be given you. Seek, ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Ask, seek, knock spells out ask. James tells us you don't get anything because you don't ask for anything. James says that sometimes you ask for things for your own lust and desire. But if you are really serious to do God's work and want the will of God done in your life, as this prayer has been said, keep pounding on God's door. I don't know how many years it's been since 1987, April. I'm still pounding on God's door for my dad to be saved. I ain't going to stop till my dad's dead or saved. But I know God's been faithful. 
I know God has answered prayer. I know God has led my dad to salvation and my dad has turned away. But I'm still going to keep asking. I'm still going to keep seeking. I'm still going to keep knocking. Until that moment when God says, no, stop it. Or I can't pray no more because of death, rapture. Even God told Jeremiah, don't pray for them no more. You got to realize we got to keep knocking. We got to keep seeking. We got to keep asking until God says, stop it. Until you know for sure that God says, no, I don't want to hear it. I mean, there's so many times that a six-year-old will ask for the keys for the car. And you say, no, I don't want to hear it. You can't do it. That request made cannot be done. End of discussion. Child comes to a mother, can I have a cookie? Well, no, not now. After dinner, you can have a cookie. You're not going to have a cookie before dinner. Now, see, it's it's what you're asking for. A six-year-old asking for keys for the car, don't ask God for those prayers. You're not capable. But the little boy that asked for a cookie, okay, yes, but it's not the time. All right, after dinner. The meal has been eaten, sometimes pass, and then the child comes up, Mom, can I have that cookie now? Yes. But don't go asking for a cookie before bedtime. That's not the time. For everyone that asketh, receive it. Everybody loves that verse. And he that seeketh, findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be open. You know what the one the I don't know how to say it. You know what the most damaging prayer God can answer for you? Is saying yes when it should be no. When God knows that prayer is going to destroy your life, but you know, you just... Better make sure what you're asking, what you're seeking, what you're knocking fulfills the will of God, verses 1 through 4. Don't go be asking for steak and potatoes as your meal. Say, Lord, I'm hungry. I need food. Many people think God is a gumball machine. Pop your quarter in and you get upset because you didn't get the color gumball you wanted. You're lucky you got a gumball. There's been a lot of things I've asked for I've never gotten. I have, may not get. I haven't gotten yet. And there are things I've gotten like, whoa, I'm sorry I asked for that. And there are things I've asked for. And, hey, praise God, glory to God, and just get more of a blessing. We needed a car. Lord, uh, I looked up the, the one of the best cars. They say number one car is, I forget what it was now. Acura. No, yeah, I think it was an Acura. One of, all right, it was one of the top ten. I'm not going to ask God for an Acura. 19, I mean a 2016 Acura. I'd be foolish. Say, Lord, we need a dependable car with low miles to get us to where we're going, where you want us to go. Then let him do the blessings. And I, I'm reminded of somebody I know personally. You know, I prayed for a wife all my life. God has blessed me in that. Somebody else has prayed for, you know, for, for a mate. Well, idiot, you got to go out there and try to find one. You can't sit in your room and she's going to parachute from heaven. It's not going to happen. And it's never happened yet. You got to go seeking. And then you got to knock on God's door. For the door to be open. I want the door. I want the Lord to open the door of this ministry. Have you knocked? Well, no. Well, how are they going to know you're standing outside the door? In the, in the Navy, it's a rule. You don't enter a room till you bang on the door. Other than that, you don't go into the room. No one's going to know what you want until you ask. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father. See, we're going all into prayer now. And say the Lord's Prayer. Which one? The one in Luke or the one in Matthew? They're both quite different. You ever know that? Ever show that to a Catholic? Oh, do you say the Lord's Prayer? Yeah, I do. Which one do you say? Matthew or Luke? 
And then show them, and they don't even realize that they're both different. They're reading a prayer, and the prayer in the Bible is different in both Bibles. This Luke 11 is about prayer. You know, Jesus says you can bother God so much that he's going to answer your prayer because he's getting tired of hearing you. But it may be to your own, own woe. I've been praying for a ministry for the Lord. I've been praying to be a pastor of a church. You know what I realize? God is God may not answer that prayer for a pastor. I'm still praying for it. But you realize the ministry he's given me? I've got a ministry all over the world. I didn't even realize one day, too. I sat down and God said, you just shut up and see what I've done for you. Okay, open up the computer. I'm in countries where you can't bring a Bible. I go to a place I just got yelled at yesterday for no religion. But I've been witnessing, and I haven't opened my mouth. They opened their mouth. God says, how's that? I've given you ministry without the worries, without the, the, the stomach troubles. With, oh, I had stomach troubles, but not because of the ministry. How's that? I've given you a burden-free ministry. Only thing you got to do is when you do the ministry I give you, just see if a cop comes. Is he coming for you? Is he driving by? So, you're going to give a child bread? Or will you give him a stone? Now, isn't that just logical? What would you think? You are sitting at McDonald's somewhere, or Burger King, if I can say their name. And you see a father, he's got his child there. Right? They're sitting at the table. The father takes out a bag of Big Mac, fries, and a Coke. And... He sits down with that and he hands his son a rock. What would you do? I'd take that rock and hit the father upside the head and grab the Big Mac and give it to the child and eat the fries myself. I don't know. I love the fries. But what would you do? How about this? If he asks a fish, will you for a fish give him a serpent? Here, son, here's a snake. You know, it was, you know what, sometimes I read that, I wonder if, if even Jesus is probably the serpent is alive. I don't know, maybe cooked. If he shall ask an egg, will you offer him a scorpion? That's a great meal. That's a, what would you do if you went to a restaurant? Yeah, I like to have blah, 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 and you come in and there's a bunch of scorpions sitting on your plate. You leave. You'd be offended. You'd scream. You'd holler. You'd let that waiter know, hey! Something wrong here. See, there's something wrong. And yet, there are people out there who have a God that expects from that God good things in life, and all they do is get wickedness and get damnation in the eternal life. There are people in hell today who worship Satan. They didn't know it was Satan, but they worship Satan, and that was their reward. Instead of eternal life, they got damnation and torment. What kind of father is that? Read John 8, 44. How'd you like to have a father that's a liar? John 8, 44. It just lies to you all the time. It's nothing more worse than somebody who lies. Here's a father. The opposite of a father who, who doesn't give their child what they need, what they should get. Gives them complete opposite. That's Satan. The counter of here is God and Satan. God will give you bread. He will give you fish. He'll give you an egg. Look what Satan will give you. Look what a terrible father will give you. And we've got a worse father generation in America today. We've got fathers who won't even give their children nothing. How's that one? The children don't even know who their fathers are. And the parents, and the, the mother has got to go to court to get a court orders to get that guy's paycheck to do something. And then the guy skips out. We've got a worse father found in, in Luke 11 in America today. Glory to, to a father that still, I mean, may be divorced, but still gives money for, at least for the children. Maybe not the wife, for the children. If he then being evil, ooh, who was he talking to? Who came to him? The disciples. If you being evil, there's none good. No, not one. For all have sinned, come the shorter glory of God. In my heart, Jeremiah says, is wicked above all things. Who can know it? 
Know how to give good gifts to your children. I don't think I've ever given my children a gift that would harm them. I don't think I've ever handed my seven-year-old son, here, here, son, here's a box of razor blades. Go have fun. I don't think I've ever given my daughter a rattlesnake. Here, here's a nice little pet for you to play with. I've given them good things. At least I think it's been good things. How much more shall your heavenly Father, capital F, give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? See, we've been talking about the relationship with God in prayer. God is only going to give you the good thing. Why didn't I get that Corvette? Because that's not good for you right now. Why well, wanted a Corvette? You got a wife and two kids. Where are you going to put the kids? Oh, I didn't think about that. You know? And he was casting out a devil. I like the casting out a devil. You know, throw him away. What do you think about casting out? What do you think of? You think of fishing. Throwing the, throwing the thing out. You're casting out into the water. Lake of fire. And it was dumb. A dumb devil. Devils have infirmities. This devil can't speak. He was casting out a devil and it was dumb. What? Who's the it? The devil. And it was and it came to pass when the devil was gone out, the dumb spank, and the people wondered. Here he goes again. He's doing things that people never seen. But some of them said, Here we go, mark another part of your Bible in Gospel of Luke. <clears throat> Rejection again of Jesus Christ. He casts out devils through Beelzebub, the chief of the devils. And we learn through Matthew that this is the Pharisees saying this. He's doing that because of Satan. Beelzebub is the lord of the flies, the chief deity of hell, of damnation, Satan himself. They just called Jesus Christ Satan. There's a denomination out there that says Satan and Jesus are brothers. And others tempting him sought for a sign from heaven. We learn in Matthew, that's the Pharisees. But he knowing their thoughts, Jesus knows your thoughts, not Santa Claus, said unto him, Every kingdom divided against itself is brought to desolation, and a house divided against a house falleth. Satan cannot go against Satan, his kingdom will fall. But you know what's so funny? Satan's kingdom will fall. But then again, it won't fall. Satan will be cast down the lake of fire. That's his kingdom. He's been thrown out of heaven. He'll never see New Jerusalem. He'll never see the new earth. The new, the, the new outer space. Heavens. That's what I'm thinking of. Heavens. Yeah, but he will be in his kingdom forever, the lake of fire, which burns forever, with all his loyal subjects. If Satan also be divided against himself, he shall, how shall his kingdom stand? But ye say that I cast out devils through Beelzebub. See the reference there between Satan and Beelzebub, the lord of the flies. Be careful of flies. Be careful of birds. There's something satanic about it. And you, when you read the Bible, study the Bible, as far as we've gone right now, there's no other reading you can get from that. If Satan also be divided against himself, how shall his kingdom stand? Because he say, I cast out devils through Beelzebub. And if I by Beelzebub cast out devils, by whom do your sons cast them out? Therefore shall they be your judges. Uh-oh. Jewish people are casting out devils too. Maybe the disciples. They are the sons of the Jews. And one of these days, whoever is doing the casting out, the exorcism, if you want to call it that, who's ever doing it is going to stand at your judgment and say, hey, how do we do it? Did we do it by Satan too? 
He can't be. Satan cannot divide himself against himself. Satan ain't that stupid. There's an army in the Old Testament. They fought against each other and killed each other. Satan is not that dumb. Man is. World War II, there are countless stories. Vietnam, there are countless stories that our own men were killed by our own artillery. Satan is not that stupid. But if I, with the finger of God, Exodus 9, Exodus 8, 19, 31, 18, Deuteronomy 9, 10, maybe the writing upon the wall of the walls of Babylon for Belshazzar, when Jesus knelt down on the ground and wrote something on the ground, the finger of God. With the finger of God, God has a finger. How's that? With the finger of God. Cast out devils. Would you take that verse to think that, that Jesus is saying, I'm God and with my finger I'm doing it? I would. I don't think you would misplace that because Jesus is God. With God's finger, see my finger? That's God's finger. You know, what's that artist portrait? You got God reaching down to a man, something like that. Two oh, I don't know, that painting. Well, that's Jesus' finger if it's God's finger. Cast out devils. No doubt the kingdom of God is come on to you. Did you just see me do cast out that dumb devil? Yeah, we did. The kingdom of God is here. What are you asking for a sign for? Here I am. And how more eliminating can Jesus be when the powers of Satan are answering to Jesus and confessing who Jesus is and are scared to death of what Jesus can do to them? If I came across a devil-possessed person, I'd be scared of that person. And I'm a Christian. The devils are afraid of Jesus. James chapter 2. When a strong man arm keepeth his palace. Strong man is Satan. His is Satan. His goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he, Jesus, shall come upon him, Satan, and overcome him, Satan, he, Jesus, taketh from him, Satan, all his, Satan's armor, wherein he, Satan, trusteth, and divideth his spoils. Satan is a strong being. He's had 6,000 years of experience of man, and he only has three weapons in his toolbox. Lust of the flesh, the pride of lie, life, and the lust of the eyes. That's the only three tools in his craftsman's toolbox. 6,000 years of man. And yet, I have a stronger than Satan. Who conquered the strong man by the cross. By the empty tomb. The tools of Jesus Christ. The blood and the empty tomb. That's the gospel. How's that? The blood of Jesus Christ and that empty tomb washes away the lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. How's that? That's how strong Jesus is. You know how strong Satan is? He can damn people into hell because of lust of the flesh, the pride of life, and the lust of the eyes. Watch someone who has damned Jesus Christ and has nothing to do with his salvation, does not want to receive Christ as his Savior. See what one of those three things are in his life. And Satan won. See it for a Christian. They're saved. They can't lose their soul. But see what one of those three tools Satan uses to keeps that guy from earning crowns and pleasing the Lord. It's got to be one of the three. Nothing else. Pride of life. I go fishing. Look how big of a fish I caught. Look how many I caught. Lust of the eye. Well, we went to the movies. We went to the, the, the Mickey Land. Ooh, isn't it so great to see? See, the, see our pictures?
He that, he that is not with me is against me, and he that gathers not with me scattered. And this is the same words used when, when John or James comes up to and say, We saw someone casting out devils in thy name, remember? We forbade him, Lord. Hey, he's not against us. So somewhere this happened. When, I think it was Mark that we read that. See, with scripture, with scripture, you can put it in places. This is where James and John go, hey, excuse me, master. You just got rid of this dumb spirit. You just rebuked the Pharisees. We saw a guy, see, see where now where it fits? We saw this guy casting out, and we forbid him. And this is where 23 comes into play. Let's see. I got Matthew 6, 24 as a note here. I don't know if that's the place I was talking about. But we read it. It's either Matthew or, or Mark. So Matthew 12, 30. But somewhere we read it. It's definitely not in John. We haven't got there yet. And when the unclean spirit has come out of a man. Look, now, we've gone from prayer. We've gone to, the, to devils. We've gone to devil. We've gone to probably James and John. Now we're talking about unclean spirits. When the unclean spirit has gone out of a man. This is self-reformation. This is the Reformation period that we're going to try to clean Mother Catholic Church. And she has a whole bunch of daughters. Are they saved? Corporate? No. Individuals? I don't know. How, how's that for saying it? All right. All those that came out of the, of the Protestant Reformation. I'm not a Protestant. They clean Mother Church. But as a denomination, they did not get right. You do not ordain women and say God is right with you. You don't have sodomites in the pulpit and in welcome in your church and say it's okay. You defile the body. When an unclean spirit is going out of a man, he, the unclean spirit, walketh through dry places. No wetness. Seeking rest and findeth none. He saith, this unclean spirit, I the unclean spirit will return unto my house. Oh, he calls the body his house. Those swines were called a house for the unclean spirit. Whence I came out. And when he cometh, he finds it swept and garnished. It's clean. The vacuum cleaner, the dusting, the windows are clean. It looks like he got right, doesn't it? Guess what? I said a prayer. I relied on baptism. I ate and drank Jesus' body. I went and told a man my sins and I had to say whatever. I sold magazines. I pedaled a bike. I umbagoomunga. I did something. I walked up and down stairs on broken glass on my knees and bled. I can keep going. This is religion. Then he then go with he and take it to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. I wonder how many. I just read that. I wonder how many Protestant churches came out of that mess. I would assume maybe seven. I don't know. Seven more spirits wickeder than himself, and they entered in and dwelled there. The last state of that man is worse than the first. Be careful to say this prayer. And you're saved. Be careful when you're dealing with somebody about their soul. Don't make them think they're saved and they're not saved just because you love them. You may make them a greater damnation. You just may clean without Jesus, without the blood. There's no blood here. There's no God here. He reformed himself. You know how many programs are run by reformers in the churches today? They make sure it's the blood. And not work. Listen, when my wife cleans, sweeps, and, and garnishes the house, that's hard work. She gets tired from it. She sweats from it. But when you go to Jesus and you apply the blood of Jesus Christ, there is no sweat. There's relief, but no sweat. And it came to pass as he spanked these things, a certain woman of the company. Mark this verse down for dealing with, with Catholics, please. Mark this verse down. Know it. 
It came to pass as he spake these things, a certain woman, notice the word certain, of the company lifted her voice and said, Blessed is the womb that bare thee, and the paps which thou sucked. Blessed the Virgin Mary. Here's a Catholic, 33 AD, long before Constantine. Blessed your mother, Jesus. Are you ready for the rebuke? Are you ready for Jesus to receive the Catholic Church? And he said, Yea, rather blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. You want a Catholic upset? Read them that verse. You get a sure enough Mary worshiper. Don't read verse 28 right away. Say, hey, isn't that woman worshiping Jesus? Get them hooked. Get that hook in their jaw. Yeah. And then read 28. In love, of course. And if that don't get them turning from Mary to Jesus Christ, nothing will. I've used that. I've dealt with the whole Roman Catholic family. Don't tell me the, the Catholic Church, what, 612, whatever, whatever date. It's 33 AD. It's even before that because you got a guy in the book of Judges who hires a priest, calls him father, gives him money, gives him clothes, and gives him an imagery. Yeah. And then he gets stolen. So when they name a date for the Catholic Church, thank you, Luke. And Luke's the only one that records this. Thank you, Luke. I want what the modern Bible, I want what the Catholic edition says. And you know what? It's not changed. You know why it's not changed? Because the Catholics tell you don't read your Bible. Don't you dare read Luke 11. You will tell you what to believe. And then, I remember one thing we keep on saying it was in church, and I read the psalm. It's like, oh, bro, um, well, how's it go? What is it? Um, I can't think what it is. It's a thing, and then you chant. Um, I can't think of it. Yeah, no, it's. I, I, I'm just keep going. And when the people were gathered thick together. Wow. There's a lot of people following you. I'd love to have that thick together. I had a cop one time. Well, where's all your congregation? Evolution doesn't work. <laughs> people are not gathering themselves more and more to Jesus. Here is a thick gathering people. Evolution. If evolution was true, when I go down to the farmer's market at about 10 o'clock a.m., Everybody in Daytona Beach should be there. And not only Daytona Beach, Flagler Beach and all the other beaches. Of, we should be wanting to go hear the word of God. Evolution doesn't work. Revelation tells us the church is going to get worse and worse and worse and worse. And so are the people. He began to say, this is an evil generation. Oh, Jesus. How, that's not nice to say. You don't have nothing nice to say about the people. If you ain't got nothing nice to say, then don't say nothing at all. You ain't got no love. He's about to, because he's on his way to Calvary. The date here is 33 AD. Imagine somebody coming up to Jesus right now. You ain't got no love. Wait a few more days or weeks. I'll show you what love is. This is an evil generation. They seek a sign. Americans like that. You know that? Find me one place you can't go. You can't find a sign somewhere. Keep off the grass. Marlboro. Three for a dollar. You know? Exit. Enter. Do not wash. Do not, you know? Signs are everywhere. But Jews require a sign. That's the thing. The sign has come. The Messiah. And there shall no sign be given it but the sign of Jonas the prophet. Oh, do you got to mention him? You know what he did to the, to, to the Gentiles? Notice how he keeps bringing Gentiles up. For Jonas was a sign unto the Ninevites. What was that sign? The resurrection of a dead man, of a dead Jew coming preaching to you judgment is coming you know i was a dead man one time i received christ as my savior i baptized i was put under water as a sample of death i come out of the water telling people judgment's coming 
But I do it with a good attitude, not like Jonah. I don't go sit on either. Go, go get him, Lord. So shall the Son of Man be to this generation. Guess what? Some people say Jonas didn't die. The resurrection of Jonas was assigned to the Gentiles. The resurrection of Jesus Christ will be assigned to the Gentiles. So when you get somebody in your pulpit that teaches Jonah did not die, did not go to hell, you take that message and you put it in hell. It's where it belongs. The Queen of the South, another Gentile. Ooh, boy, he's even putting that knife in there. He shouldn't have told him he was, he was Satan. The Queen of the South shall rise up in judgment of the men of this generation. The Queen of the South shall rise up. She will be resurrected. <laughs> now, as far as I know, she has not yet come back to life yet. Do you see at the judgment at the great white throne judgment people are going to come up out of the graves and they're going to stand to condemn you? I believe by the Bible, and if I'm wrong, you can throw this in the garbage can. I believe people are going to stand before God the great white throne judgment, and he's going to call my family up. Myself, my wife, and my daughter, step up. I don't know how he's going to do it. You see these three people? You remember those three people? No, I don't. All right, let's see if you remember this. Stolly, speak the word. For God so loved the world. Oh, crap. Yeah, that's right. Oh, crap. That's all I have to say. That's how I start every man. And that guy would be condemned by the words I'd open up my mouth. The Queen of Sheba is going to stand before people and judge and say, Listen, I believe that God. I didn't even know who he was. I traveled from Sheba to Jerusalem. But hey, 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 hey. Jesus traveled from heaven to Jerusalem to you. You didn't have to travel. Here he is. The Queen of Sheba put expenses to come to hear God. You guys, you just were just living. One day I showed up in a manger. I've been healing people. I've been taking care. With the men of this generation. The Queen of Sheba is going to stand before the people who are standing before Jesus Christ. How do you like that one? And condemn it. John chapter 3. For she came from the utmost parts of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Solomon was a real man, and his wisdom was real according to Jesus Christ. And behold, a greater than Solomon is here. How is he greater than Solomon? Jesus Christ only worshipped the Father and the Father only. Solomon didn't have the trouble with that. So, uh, Jesus Christ has one bride. Solomon had a little trouble with that. Jesus has one horse. Solomon had a little trouble with that. You know, we keep going. Solomon built a temple that has been destroyed by Babylon. Jesus is going to build us a mansion. He's going to build New Jerusalem. It will never be destroyed. We'll keep going. They're both the son of David. We'll keep going. Jesus said a mouthful. The men of Nineveh shall rise up in judgment with this generation. The nation that got right under the preaching of Jonah is going to stand up and say to the Jews, you're guilty. Gentiles are going to tell, oh, wait a minute, hold on, hold on. Who was it that told Jeremiah that God did this to you because you're sin? A Babylonian officer of the army under Nebuchadnezzar spoke to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, you're wrong. Not Jeremiah, but the nation. He he backed up Jeremiah's preaching and let Jeremiah go, but he pronounced that the nation that Jeremiah was under, sin. That's going to happen again. Everything in the Bible is written for a reason. And shall condemn it, for they repented at the preaching of Jonah. A mad preacher. Angry preacher. That wanted judgment and how far to come down like James and John. A great, uh, no. And behold, a greater than Jonas is here. So when you preach the Bible, you better preach properly about Solomon and you better properly preach about Jonas because Jesus said, I'm better than they are. But their names are worthy to be in my speech. You know where people blow it? The Masons say they come from Solomon. You ask my wife, we've been in Bible-believing Baptist churches that said Jonas never died and did not go to hell. Shall we sing some more songs to blare your ears out?
I hope you get that. No man, when he lighteth a candle, put it in a secret place. Neither under a bushel. There's that bushel again. But on a candlestick. This is in Matthew 5, Mark 4. This is in here more about the birth of Jesus Christ. What do you think is more important? Your candle shining. But on a candlestick that they which come in may see the light. The light of the body is the eye. Advertising uses this. Advertising focuses. Number one, this is the lust of the eyes that Satan uses. The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thy eye is single, thy whole body is full of light. But when thy eye is evil, so single is opposite of evil. You can't serve two masters. You're evil. You better serve God being single-minded. Thy body is full of darkness. Take heed, therefore, that the light which is in thee be not darkness. Jesus Christ is the light. Better not put it out. In thy whole body, therefore, be full of light, having no part dark. Don't you have anything to do with Billy Isle? The whole, the whole shall be full of light as when the bright shining of a candle does give thee light. Take care of your light. Trim your light. Keep it out in the open. People will know who you are. They will. They'll acknowledge who you are. And God will open up doors and windows for you for your light to step out. I've had it happen in my new job. And as he spake, a certain Pharisee besought him to dine with him. And he went in and sat down to meet. And when the Pharisee saw it, he marveled that he had not first washed before dinner. Mark 7, 3. <laughs> Didn't wash his hands. And the Lord said unto him, Now do ye Pharisees make clean the outside of the cup and platter. You look good on the outside. But your inward part is full of revenue and wickedness. Ew. Isn't he just nice? He's sitting down for dinner. You guys are just filthy scum. Please pass the bread. <laughs> Ye fools. What would Jesus do? Did not he that made that which is without make that which is within also? Inside, outside? Oh, it didn't happen by chance? It wasn't a rock? You mean there was a creator? Oh. But rather give alms of such things as ye have, and behold, all things are clean unto you. But woe unto you Pharisees, for ye... T now we're going into tithing. How do we get into tithing? You tithe mint and rue and all men of herbs, the little things. And pass over judgment and the love of God. These, these, are, these ought ye have to done and not to leave the other under. You know, you wash your hands, that's good. But you know what? You're not helping the widows. You're not helping the fatherless. You're not help. You're putting a bigger burden on the people. Washing your hands? Before you eat? Really? Where is that in the law? For eating, not leprosy and dealing with people bleeding and all that. It's not in there. I wonder if the Pharisees were charging for the water. You ever think about that? Water came from wells. Just think. Is it Psalms that says, no, Lamentation says, we drink our water for a price? I just wonder. Uh. Woe unto you Pharisees, for ye love the uppermost seats in the synagogues and greetings in the market. So that tells us that there's some kind of mark, uh, not market, what is it? Balcony, or the synagogues were sloped up, or higher seats. Woe unto you scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. Isn't he? He's great. He's invited to dinner, and he's giving them a nice, what would Jesus do message. Love and honor. Woo-hoo! All the daisies have shrunk up and died by now. For ye are as graves that appear not, 
and the men that walk over them are not aware of them. You're dead. <laughs> You're dead. You're gooey. You're ooky, worm infested. You're the living dead. Then answered one of the lawyers and said, Master, thou say is that thus say that yeah, master thus saying thus saying thou reproaches us also you're making fun of us too and he said i'm sorry i just didn't have the love of god today with me he said woe unto you also you lawyers Woo you laden men with burdens grievous to be born and ye yourselves touch not the burdens with one of your fingers there's no help they keep loading the people down, lowering the people down. You're going to have to pay a tax when your spouse dies, but we're not going to help you. We're going to charge you more money to do that tax upon it. We're going to pass laws that you have to come to a lawyer for lawyer things in order to be, and we don't need a lawyer, but we're going to pass a law so you need a lawyer that you don't need. Ah. And the people can't afford it. That's what America's doing today. And she's not doing it under religion. She's done. She's doing it under government. Jesus is talking about what's going on with the religion. They're doing this for the people to get to heaven. The government of America is doing it so they can get your money. Woe unto you, for ye build the sepulchres of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. You build the, the mausoleums, the ones your fathers killed. Truly ye bear witness that ye allowed the deeds of your father, for they indeed killed them, and ye build their sepulchers. Well, you never repented of your sin. You just built a nice building. Works. Therefore also said the wisdom of God, I will send them prophets and apostles, and some of them they shall slay and persecute. Stephen gets chewed out, dead, stone. Proverbs 1, 21, 22. Hebrews 11, 35. Acts 7, 51 and 52. He's also prophesying what they're going to do to his disciples. Notice he said apostles. Where do you find apostles in the Old Testament? You don't. You find them in the future. And this is what these people are here. These lawyers are going to kill them. Jesus just prophesied. Not only death, burial, and resurrection. He's going to, he prophesied what they're going to do to his prophets. This apostles, the blood of all the prophets, which was shed from the foundation of the world, may be required of this generation. They didn't do it. Man, they built nice buildings, but they never professed the sins of their fathers, the sins of the nations. We just built nice, good buildings in honor of their names. Aren't we good? And tax right off from the blood of Abel. Who's that? That's the first person ever to be murdered. Unto the blood of Zacharias. Who's that? In the order of the Jewish Bible, Second Chronicles is the last book, not Malachi. The Jewish Bible, the last book is the Old Testament, is Second Chronicles. So what Jesus is saying from the beginning of time, the first person murdered to the last person murdered in your Bible, in your canon, everybody from Abel to Zacharias that was murdered is your fault. Now, how is that for a murder charge? You were never sorry for what your fathers did. All you did, you just built wonderful buildings to cover it up. Now, if that's not America, what isn't? which perished between the altar and the temple. Zacharias died in the temple. Second Chronicles 24, 20, and 21. He died doing the Lord's service. Remember what Saul did? He killed the priests because they helped David. He ordered it. And what Dudag, whatever his name was, did it. But he ordered it. Very I say unto you, it shall be required of this generation. You know what's great about the blood of Jesus Christ being saved? Anything I've done in the past is all under the blood. 
A man is in jail for murder. He gets saved. He believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. It's all under the blood. Now the consequences, let's do there. Woe unto you lawyers. He won't give it up, will he? For he hath taken the key of knowledge. Ye enter not in yourselves, and them that were entering in, ye hindered. Into what? How to get saved. These lawyers were, pre were preventing people to Abraham's bosom. Would you like to have that charge? Would you like to prevent somebody from going to heaven? Some Christians do. Many unsaved people do. I was told yesterday at work, I can't bring in religion. You know what you just did? You prevented me in a way that openly I can't profess the gospel of Jesus Christ. And people may go to hell. I don't want to be you, buddy, in the great white throne judgment. I don't want to be you. Because if you were giving me liberty to preach the gospel, maybe somebody would get saved. But now that you hindered me, they did the same thing. They did the same thing as the lawyers. You closed the door of knowledge. I got the knowledge how to get saved, but you won't let me have it and say it openly. Jesus was allowed in the Jewish synagogues, even though they hated him. And yet, America, a Christian nation, you can't even go into the work and profess Jesus Christ. How's that? And as he said these things unto them. The lawyers, the scribes and Pharisees began to urge him vehemently and provoke him to speak of many things. Man, he let the Pharisees have it. He let the lawyers have it. They're trying to get him to shut up. I've had this street preaching. I'll be preaching the gospel. Somebody will come up and try to shut me up. You ain't going to shut me up. Lying wait for him. And seeking to catch something out of his mouth. And that they might. Now they're starting to watch his words. Here it begins in Luke 11. How can we catch him. At his words. Of the government or the law. That we can crucify him. It's now begun. 